Hello everyone, my name's Johnny and I attend TLC Church in Cumbran. I am on the leadership and play guitar in the worship team. Our pastor Tony has asked me to give a word, a little testimony today, so I thought I'd share a little of my journey so far with our awesome God. When I look back over my life, I can see how God's hand was guiding me throughout, from my early teens in a Christian youth club I attended, to the house group that evolved from there, to a prayer competition I won in school, to wanting to learn guitar at quite a young age. God had a plan, although I never saw. My life was nothing out of the ordinary as I grew. I was muddling through, happily married, two daughters, working, mortgage, all the usual things, but so far from God without realising it, until a very good friend of mine, whom, whom I'd known since childhood, told us that they were expecting. They, as a couple, never wanted children, so this was quite a surprise. When Sammy J was born and a little while after, she was being dedicated. I didn't know what this meant, but the sadness later was finding it out that they were both Christians, but my friend Nick had kept it quiet from me and others in case he was ridiculed at work. However, on the day of the dedication, we had already been invited to a christening of a work colleague in the morning. We attended the christening and, sorry to say, it was farcical. The arcala of the brownies was obviously besotted with the vicar. I was jealous because she had a better beard than me. The vicar led worship on an old acoustic guitar and was, let's just say, he was rubbish. I'm sorry to say folk were openly laughing at the service and it reminded me why I didn't attend church. I didn't know God, and apart from weddings and funerals, was happy never to go again. But he knew me. After the debacle of the christening, we went to a local pub for food, and after a few beers, the guys, some of whom I work with, were begging for us not to go to the dedication later that day, but to stay and have a drink with them. I must say we were tempted, but God had a plan and the devil was doing his utmost to upset it. Later that day, we arrived at Cumbran Christian Centre for the dedication, and what a difference. The worship was up-tempo and uplifting. The pastor was funny and a natural communicator. I was being called without even knowing it. After the service, we went to another bar. I saw the pastor there and bought him a beer, and we chatted. We had so much in common. Here was a man sold out for God, yet a real man, approachable, no hairs and graces, spoke my languages, full of God, even though I didn't realise this at the time. I just felt I wanted more, and the calling was getting louder. I later found out that when he first met me, that God had told him that I had leadership written all, leadership written all over me, and God is amazing. That week I rang Jane, Nick's wife, and asked if I could arrange a meeting with the pastor, whose name was Alwyn. I went to his house later that week. We drank tea, chatted all night about all sorts. No pushing got on me. It was just two guys chatting and having fun with each other. We met again later and talked and ch chatted about Jesus, and I just felt God calling me even though still I probably didn't really understand what that was. I decided to attend church a little while later. I plucked up the courage and went, all the while hoping, praying that my friend Nick would be there. I walked in, he wasn't, and I felt really out of place, like every eye was upon me while looking for an inconspicuous place to sit. With that, an old guy got up, walked towards me and asked me to sit with him. It was an amazing act of kindness. I later found out it was Elwyn Senior, the pastor's dad, whom I affectionately named Pops, and we became lifelong friends and shared many adventures, including mission trips to a Ukraine, to America, and many other places, until he was called to Jesus a few years ago. As I said earlier, I had dabbled with the guitar for many years, never in bands and just enjoyed playing around the house, etc., but God had a plan. I had been at church a little while when we had a visiting worship leader and his mum, James and Barbara Moody. 
that we had a meeting planned for a Wednesday evening. And up until then, I'd had nothing to do with worship, with anything. And Pastor asked me if I'd like to play guitar at this meeting with James. It was the first time I had done anything like this. James was a gifted pianist and worship leader. We met on the Saturday before to rehearse. We went through the songs, practiced, rehearsed, practiced, and it was all sounding good. And I was really looking forward to the Wednesday and playing and being part of something at church. The day arrived, Barbara preached, and the power of God came down in a way I'd never seen and rarely seen since. We had started to play again as she ministered, and it was as if a tsunami of the Holy Spirit had blown through the building. I was a little apprehensive, having never experienced anything like this. To a man, the whole church was on the floor, slain in the spirit, and I felt the Holy Spirit come upon me, and I knew my heart had been captured. James kept looking at me whilst I was playing, and I realised why. The umpteen pages of sheet music were scattered, and I was playing guitar along with James to songs I had never heard. He later said, I could feel and see the anointing come upon you. There and then I fell to my knees, giving my life to Jesus. It was just amazing. I made many decisions in a short time, one of which was to become the best guitarist I could for Jesus, to write love songs to him, to write thank you songs to him, worship songs, to practice because I believed that anything you do unto the Lord has to be your best. In the Old Testament, when a lamb was to be sacrificed, it had to be spotless, the best you had. That spoke to me. So I practiced the guitar, learned scales, chords, keys, all I could to master the instrument to be the best I could. I invested in the best gear I could afford. I taught folk to play, encouraged and blessed and helped all I could. I know that I was anointed that evening, but I still put the hours in. Because in all ministries, we have to. We have to prepare, be passionate, selfless. My passion is to be a worshipper, to be part of a worship team that leads his church into the sanctuary, to be the best I can for King Jesus. And I just want to share this little thing that came to me. My friend Dave Loder is an exceptional angler. He prepa prepares on every level before setting a foot on the beach or bait in the water. He will pick his venue depending on tide height, the time of year, so he knows what fish will be expected at that mark. He will check the weather, wind direction. He'll probably go to the mark at low tide to look for features on the seabed that may attract fish, make specific rigs to target the expected species, source the freshest baits. So with all his preparation done, when he arrives at the beach, he has maximised his chances and consequently is a very successful angler, fishing for his country, winning countless matches because he puts the time in. What if we were like Dave in our ministries, in our church life? What if instead of waking up on a Sunday morning, dragging ourselves out of bed, the last thing on our mind before we went to sleep was God? What if we got up earlier, spent time in prayer before the service? So instead of being a zombie like Christian, we arrive charged, filled, expectant. What if we prepared for church as Dave prepares to go fishing? Perhaps instead of checking the time on our phones in case the Sunday joint burns, we are expecting the Holy Spirit to come like a flood. We are expecting healings. We, we are gazing to heaven with our hands lifted high, expecting heaven's gates to be flung wide. Preparation, passion perseverance is the key to a successful ministry to a successful church life we need to put the time in put the effort in for the rewards are great amen thank you